pluses of this car though is definitely the handling. As a 328, obviously the open top, perhaps it has a little bit of a disadvantage versus the GTB model, but I don't think anybody would be disappointed having this car and, and understanding this is a sports car at that particular time in the 80s. But this is really meant for the kind of roads that I live on here, the area where I live. It's really agile, you can throw it around. Uh, it feels fast, obviously because it's a, an older car, the profile of the tires, the height it sits off the ground. But this particular road I'm on, this mountain road, is really fantastic. And the car just loves it, it just eats it up. Moving through the gearbox, this is such a joy. Probably the big, biggest bonus of this car is the gearbox itself. How easy it is to use this car. It doesn't have the warm-up time that a lot of people complain about. Second gear is actually very accessible uh, really from the get-go on this car. Although uh, the car does need to warm up before you really start to use the engine. But the gearbox is a thing of joy. The sound the engine makes so when everything's warmed up is really fantastic. I've upgraded the exhaust in this car. I think most people should do the same thing. Uh, the standard exhaust is really uh, too quiet, too uh, brav, they say in German. Uh, this car needs to be louder for yeah, to fit really the whole personality of the car. So I would highly recommend to get a standard 2B exhaust once you buy one of these cars. Keep the original one, of course, because it's important to have that. Uh, it's really important value if you're going to get a classic certified, for example. But by all means, upgrade the exhaust, no question. Few cars capture the essence of pure automotive art like the Ferrari 328. With its timeless Pininfarina sculpted curves, this mid-engine masterpiece blends elegance and aggression in perfect harmony. The sharp, defined lines flow seamlessly from its low nose to the muscular rear, evoking motion even when it stands still. The 328 isn't just beautiful, it's a testament to Ferrari's dedication to performance, where every detail serves a purpose. From its iconic pop-up headlights to the slated rear vents, the 328 embodies an era where driving was visceral, thrilling, and undeniably beautiful. It's more than a car, it's an icon. And how comfortable is this car if you're on long distances? Well, the seats are cut pretty tight, they're cut pretty narrow. For me it works uh, with my size, but I can't imagine uh, somebody bigger than me, wider than me, and how much fun they're going to have in this car. It's definitely very firm. The shocks are more firm, or it feels very planted, versus the Testarossa, which is more, more supple. This feels like a sports car. So on, on long journeys, I definitely don't think this car would be everybody's favorite, and it really is. The bolsters really hug you. So for that sense, it's maybe not the most yeah, all-around car for that, but that's not everything I'm looking for in my car. This car loves narrow, twisty roads. When you get into this kind of situation, it really starts to come alive. The steering is light, it's forgiving, it goes where you want it to go. It does really feel like my go-kart. in the back end already but this is what a classic Ferrari what it should feel like so you definitely would not be going wrong if you buy the car for that reason a little bit of rain falling right now it wasn't planned but they don't melt absolutely meant to be on tight twisty roads on the way downhill of course is maybe not quite as exciting can't go quite as fast but it just eats this stuff up even as a 38 year old car uh, it's still a lot of fun to use and this is obviously a kind of a road that feels a little bit more uh, applicable for the 328 versus the Testarossa 
but it feels still pretty fast being a you know almost a 40 year old car at slower speeds it does feel like you're going much quicker it's still very low to the ground there's more body roll um, you feel everything through the steering wheel which is one of the joys of the classic car this being a 1986 no power steering it's even more uh, alive in your hands and you feel little every little nuance uh, this is really one of the big bonuses of the 328 brakes on this car are obviously uh, yeah, performance wise maybe maybe going to be disappointing for some people but they're sufficient you're not necessarily stopping from high speeds where you need that real braking power but they work well uh, and I don't feel like I'm missing anything because, again, I'm, I'm not really pushing the speeds of this car. In terms of servicing this car, since I've had it, it's been only the usual thing. So, uh, belt change, tires, brakes. That's really the only major things I've actually had to deal with in this car since the uh, almost 10 years of ownership. Uh, so it's been very, very straightforward to have this car. Uh, I've had bushings upgraded. Uh, I had to replace the uh, just the hydraulic uh, uh, suspension, or we call it in the back, uh, that holds the deck up, the piston, sorry, uh, and the one in the front. But it's really been pretty straightforward owning this car, so no no real surprises. If I compare that to the Testarossa, it's been much more high maintenance uh, owning that car since I've had it, and I've only had it a fraction of the time compared to this. But that also comes down to how many, how much care was taken in the car before you buy one of these. And if you're going to buy a 328 or any classic Ferrari, you have to do your homework. You have to really make sure you understand the car you're looking at, its history, know what's been done to it before you did it. And this car was well taken care of. Um, and with 45,000 uh, kilometers on it, uh, that's maybe a little bit more than some people would want as a collector car. Uh, but it meant the car has been driven and it's been used. So, again, service-wise, this car has been really, really easy to own. So what do I like about the uh, Ferrari, the 328? I'd have to say it's coming back to the classic car reliability. Not that this car has been a problem, but the fact that things could break down tends to make you think twice about longer trips that you would like to do. And that's really the only big thing that I uh, is, you know, it's not a question I don't like about it, it's just the reality of owning a classic car. Uh, you just have to be prepared for something to go sideways. And I have to think back, four years ago was the last time I had something break down driving. I had to have the car picked up and take it to my mechanic and it was a fuel pump. Uh, so since then it's actually been very dependable uh, driving it. Uh, and that's really the only major issue I would say about these cars. Spare parts are more rare, of course, and it's going to cost you a little bit more to do it. But any Ferrari cars uh, are going to have a, a premium on the price of spare parts. So there's not many things that go wrong with this car that I would say that are a reason not to buy it. There's way more reasons why you would want to buy this car are looking for your first class or for your first Ferrari. So what do I love about this car? The gearbox. The gearbox in this car is amazing. It is so easy to drive this car properly, heel-toe method. Uh, that combination with the gas pedal uh, and the clutch, it works very, very well. The pedal placement makes this car an, an absolute joy to drive properly, especially on our roads here where we can really use the gearbox. This is probably one of the best parts of the car. Um, on top of that, the engine, this thing loves to rev. It's not the fastest car in the world, but because it is an, almost a 40-year-old car, it feels fast, right? You don't need to be going 130, 100 kilometers per hour. This car, on our kind of roads, feels fantastically fast, and it's the experience that you're looking for. Um, if you're living in a spot where you don't have this kind of roads, uh, it's flat, it's poker straight, then you probably, maybe this isn't going to be the kind of car you want, unless of course you're, you're a little bit older and this was your poster car. On top of that, uh, the fact that the top can come off, it's a Targa, is really uh, a great part of owning this car. And last but not least,
least I would say the simplicity of this car. This is a practical Ferrari if there is such a thing. I wouldn't call the Testarossa practical. Uh, but this has really been very easy to live with. Service is generally pretty straightforward. Doing the belt change every four years on this car is putting you back 2,000 euros, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and that's not so bad. And I haven't had too many things go wrong with this car. It's very dependable. Uh, I would feel comfortable doing a longer trip on this. Have I done a trip uh, uh, five, six hour drive? No, I haven't yet because I have so much around me that's really good. That's what is really amazing about this car is those elements. So how would I sum up owning one of these cars? Well, buying a Ferrari is absolutely not a logical experience. All right, this is a luxury item. You don't need this in your everyday life. It's costly to buy. It's, it's definitely expensive to maintain and they're high maintenance. You buy one of these cars because it's a status symbol, because it was the poster car on your wall, or you just love the brand. And if you are gonna buy one of these cars, you definitely want to buy this car, all right? This car is the easiest one to live with, in my opinion. I've had it now for 10 years. This has been a joy to own. Every time I drive it, it puts a huge smile on my face. The gearbox is outstanding. The performance is 80s, all right? It's not gonna blow anybody's mind, but on the kind of roads where I live, this is the best kind of car to have. You're not gonna lose your license driving it. And ultimately, this is what it's all about, is trying to find a car that just makes you feel good when you get out there. And the 328 is, in my opinion, probably the best one to start with. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Please share this with your friends, your other car friends, and see you next time. Thanks.